Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Text3. This time you can also watch the video in case you enjoy watching me talk. I don't judge, up to you really. If you don't like watching video, that's also fine. You can just listen. So today we are time traveling to the 1930s. First off, let's talk about the image of women in the 1930s, because I feel like it's something that evolved in the interwar period. Before that, there was a desire for beauty, of course. Every woman wanted to feel beautiful. If there were some cosmetics or procedures or things that could help her achieve that, she would probably give it a try but also the beauty industry was still mostly about creams or some miracle concoctions that were supposed to make your breasts grow or your skin to whiten or your freckles to disappear so not really effective anyway that's why an average woman probably did not spend too much on her appearance unless it was necessary. Now, in the interwar period, not only did makeup become much more acceptable, but also the beauty industry bloomed. There was an idea which I think was pretty new, and that was the idea of glamour, being glamorous, looking rich, looking expensive, looking all done up. So it was expected of women to put much more effort in their appearance than it was before the World War. It was also a time where obviously women started gaining more and more rights, so all of the backlash that they could get pre-war regarding their appearance or taking care of oneself or doing too much or looking too much that was all sort of shifting towards women being able to choose what they look like and to take care of their appearance. So combine that with the fact that the interwar period is also a time when capitalism and marketing were flourishing and the media were also developing. The radio gained massive popularity. By the end of the 30s, the first TV broadcasts appeared. The print quality improved massively. So instead of just having like a a text mention of your product somewhere, you could buy out an ad on the radio or you could have a properly illustrated ad in the papers. The color print was much more popular as well. Photography was much more prevalent in the media. You ended up having much more photographs in the magazines and newspapers that you read than, than you had ever before. So needless to say, it was an era where marketing very much boomed. And if you've read The Great Gatsby or have seen one of the film adaptations, there is a whole motive built around a, a billboard advertising glasses. Also, since at the time women were often the ones taking care of the whole household, a lot of the household items were advertised with women in mind. But I, I still think the, the most shocking ads were procured by the beauty industry, which was obviously also growing in that era. And I think modern day beauty industry is mostly focused on convincing potential clients that they need the product because it's going to improve their looks. But back then it was all about guilt tripping. It was all about shame. It was all about feeling that you're not good enough. It was all about feeling that something's secretly wrong with you. And this is why you're not getting big. So it is unbelievable how ruthless the ads were at the time. It definitely varies from country to country. I have noticed that French beauty ads from the 20s and 30s are very much, this is a very exclusive glamour product that will make you feel incredibly elegant. It was all about elegance. And the ads I have seen in Polish magazines are very straightforward. So they're like, you need to get this product because it does this and it does this and you go and demand it from your seller. So there was perhaps a little less guilt tripping um, involved, but the ads we are focusing on today are mostly American and the American beauty industry just straight up hated women. So today we're going to be reading some shocking ads from the time and see if there is any ads that will actually tempt a modern buyer or if they are just all appalling uh, from a feminist perspective, because it is a lot. Coming in hot, a photo of an elegant lady that is a little concerned. The tagline is, it's not because her friends won't tell. Perhaps they are not sure themselves about feminine hygiene. In her anxiety, it is natural for the newly married woman to believe that her friends know more than they tell her about feminine hygiene. True, they may have been married longer. True, they may seem more experienced than she but they themselves have probably received advice upon this subject so different, so conflicting, 
that they hesitate to pass it on. So basically it's a it's a germicide for your private parts, but the tone of this ad is like you don't know anything about your body and you don't know anything about how to take care of it and we are here to help. Here is an interesting ad for a medicine that was supposed to make you a little bit more plump. Fashion decrease curves. Gain the new well-rounded figure my natural way so basically being curvy is in fashion now girl if you're thin you need this because otherwise you're out of fashion no longer are the new styles designed for flat-chested hipless women for dame fashion has abandoned the formless boyish figure and returned to the natural vogue the venus de milo idea of well-rounded femininity and more alluring beauty and now any woman can gain the perfectly proportioned development the latest styles require. Let me prove to you how easy it is my way. No matter how thin, scrawny or underweight you are now, try my personal methods. See how quickly they enable you to fill out ugly hollows. Did they just call you ugly? and gain good firm flesh at a safe rate whenever you need it. I use nothing but the sanest, most sensible methods I myself employed to develop the body beautiful and win fame as the world's most perfectly formed woman. In only 15 minutes a day, you can remold your figure to bring out your natural feminine attractions, avoiding both extremes of thinness and flabbiness. You feel better, look better, health and strength are improved. Over 40,000 women of all ages, rights, and conditions of life have benefited by my methods. You will be grateful too, for only feminine curves can truly express womanly loveliness in its all natural allure. If you really want to gain a beautiful symmetrical form now that the skinny figure has been outmoded, send for my interesting free booklet, The Body Beautiful. It tells about my safe way to put on pounds and at the same time build pep and energy. No obligation, mail coupon below or write. Ruthless called me ugly in so many ways and also it's incredible how they straight up said that body shapes are fashion. It changes and it just went from skinny to curvy and if you have starved yourself to achieve the fashionable silhouette, oopsie, too bad, now you need curves. But also it's interesting because a lot of these ads advertise for free booklets, which I'm assuming was just another form of ad because obviously it's it's not a booklet with actual tips that you're gonna sell for free it's probably advertising some some sort of a product it was just a more clever way to make people inquire about it a, a photo of a lady turned sideways with a very like pensive expression on her face what has changed him married five years good pals real companions until lately what has made the change in many cases, these marital tragedies are caused by the wife's unconscious disregard of that intimate phase of her toilet known as feminine hygiene. Lysol disinfectant has been relied upon by women for 40 years for this critical purpose. No woman need make mistakes. Buy a bottle of Lysol today, the directions with each bottle give correct specific advice and simple rules and send the coupon below for our free booklet, The Scientific Side of Health and Youth. It is a woman physician's frank message to women. This is a reoccurring motive in most of these ads. It's like you're losing your man because you're not taking care of yourself. If you're wondering why your husband is cold to you, it's because your breath stinks. If your husband has a lover, it's because you don't use the right deodorant. If your husband's not intimate with you, it's because you don't know feminine hygiene. It's all over the place and it's awful and it's it's guilt tripping and it's also installing this fear in women that they were always secretly disgusting and they had to do something about it because otherwise their lives were at stake there were also a lot of ads that were pretending to be the part of the magazine there is this whole article here from 1930, the letters of a young bride. So it's pretending to be letters of a bride to Cynthia. Cynthia dear, you probably won't believe it, but I'm horribly, desperately low. When your letter came an hour ago, I was sitting in the middle of the kitchen floor and crying, sobbing. Cynthia, I couldn't even bear to face the postman. I just let him ring and ring. 
The happy bride. It's such a change from those glorious honeymoon days. Oh, don't think Ted is to blame. He's wonderful. That's just the trouble. Cynthia, I am a failure. I just simply can't cook. <laughs> For weeks, Ted has come home hopefully every night and sat down to the worst meals you ever saw. <laughs> Mood. I did my best too. Worked hours over that cook stove, burned my hands, raided the messes till I was sick, and such results. Ted was a peach, of course. He ate what he could and joked about it. I just, I, I have this image of him like picking the pieces of chicken that were not completely burnt. And he's like, no, this one's actually good. But last night he called up and said he thought he'd dine downtown. Pressure of work at the office was his excuse. This morning at breakfast, he barely tasted my awful coffee and picked up his hat. And after he'd kissed me, he suggested, oh, ever so gently, that we ought to have a maid. That was the last straw, with business coming so hard at the office and with little prospect for any increases in salary, of course we can't afford a maid. Well, Cynthia, now that I've wept on your shoulder, I'll be able to face that stuff again and try to make something edible for Ted's supper. You know, before we were married, I had the silly idea that every intelligent woman was born with a sort of cooking instinct. Genuinely what I thought when I was a child. <laughs> That when the time came, she could go into her kitchen and concoct captivating custards and delicious donuts with no preparation at all. Why a girl who studied three years to become a capable secretary should reason that way is beyond me, but I did. And thousands of other girls are probably just as foolish. Goodbye, dear. The saucepans are calling. Yours in gloom, Marjorie. Now, another letter coming in after she was helped by Cynthia. Darling Cynthia, you're a lamb. When I opened your letter, I was just at the point of doing something desperate, starting for the river or calling up an employment agency. My cooking efforts had been going from bad to worse. Ted's patience was getting near the end. The skies were dark. And then I read your sensible suggestion and saw a ray of hope. It seemed incredible that one could learn to cook scientifically right at home. But I made up my mind to try, Cynthia dear, and I wrote to that wonderful school you told me about. Now I'm a full-fledged student, if you please. Ted doesn't know it's to be a secret from him, but I just have to tell someone all about it. Really, Cynthia, I wouldn't have believed that it could be so easy. But with these illustrated step-by-step -step lessons, one just can't resist learning. I made a cake yesterday that was as light as a feather and had delicious orange icing. Ted thinks it came from some marvelous new bake shop. I have heaps of fun practicing and the lunches I get while Ted's away at noon are perfectly yummy. You ought to taste them. And just think, I've begun to save money for I'm learning just how to buy the most wholesome foods with the greatest economy. Our meal times are happier now. Sometimes I think Ted suspects something, but I just smile when he praises anything, for I do want to keep my secret a little longer. Cynthia, I've thought up a thrilling plan. Next month, Mr. Graham, Ted's most important customer, will be in town. A man who may buy thousands of dollars worth of goods if Ted succeeds in selling him. He's bringing his wife with him. Now don't breathe it to a soul, but I'm going to invite them for dinner. How is that for a girl who couldn't broil chops decently two months ago? I'll let you know how it turns out. And meanwhile, please accept my undying gratitude for helping me out of my dilemma. Lovingly yours, Marjorie. So it kind of pretends to be a school, but it's actually a, a cookbook that you can get. And apparently, like, as soon as she got the book, she turned from a horrible cook to this Nigella Lawson of the 1930s. <laughs> Cynthia Dearest, I'm so happy I may not be able to write coherently. But anyway, I've got to tell you all the news. Remember my mentioning the Grahams? The day they arrived in town, I casually said to Ted, Let's have them out here to dinner tomorrow night. Here? He said, how could you do it? Could you get someone in to help you? Then I told him what I'd been doing and you should have seen his face. I'm perfectly certain he was worried about that dinner, but he didn't want to hurt my feelings. He's such a good sport. Fine, he said, I'll ask them. Honestly, Ted is a sweetheart. Like, <laughs> just anything he does, it's like 
He's trying to be as respectful as possible, but then the food is horrible. It wasn't an elaborate menu, Cynthia. Just such a satisfying, delicious dinner as my mother or yours would have served for company, with a few modern ideas added. Piping hot tomato bisque, then spicy baked ham with candied sweets and pineapple slices, spinach souffle, and hot tea biscuits light as a feather. A crisp salad with cheese straws, then real lemon pie with thick meringue, and coffee in my best china. The table was so pretty too, some lovely pansies in a low green bowl and crisp celery, radish roses and olives for relishes. Mr. Graham beamed and helped himself again and again to my biscuits. The pie was a riot and blessed old Ted was all smiles. Next day he came home early radiating joy. I've sold him, honey, he said, and I believe two thirds of it was that wonderful dinner of yours. Graham's still talking about it. His business will almost double my sales for the year. So you see, Cynthia, this little family of ours owes you a big debt of gratitude. If it hadn't been for you and the Women's Institute, I'd still be struggling with cast iron biscuits. And who knows where the Graham business would have gone. You are hereby invited to pay us a visit soon and taste for yourself the results of my study. Gratefully yours, Marjorie. So, uh, a beautiful, happy ending. All she needed was the book. All she needed was this one particular book that taught her everything she knows about cooking. And the last section of the ad is, are you a Marjorie? Are you wondering how you can master the secrets of successful cookery that made married life so much easier and happier? Thousands of women all over the country have learned right at home by this wonderful step-by-step -step picture method of the Women's Institute how to buy foods economically, how to prepare and serve them in delicious, well-balanced, health-giving meals, how to entertain delightfully. Fun fact, the Women's Institute was located in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> One thing I don't really understand, because I'm sold, I am so into this. It's a made-up story, it's like Marjorie nor Cynthia do not exist, but this actually sounds convincing to me. It sounds like if I was a housewife in the 30s that was hopeless when it comes to cooking, which is very possible given my cooking skills now, I would so get this book. And what I'm just confused about is because she, she did mention writing a school and being a student. And then there is mention of courses and lessons, but it does seem like it's just books or maybe some materials that you would get to your home. Again, another ad where bodies are fashion. It goes like this. Women men admire. Pretty rounded face and neck. Miss Gonzalez of Reno, Nevada writes... I have used Tiffany Tissue Builder only two weeks and already it has filled out my sunken cheeks and removed worried, worn out lines that woman dreads. I used to look so old for my age, but now I am proud of my appearance. You too can abolish sunken cheeks, thin necks, hollow shoulders. It's always so unreal to read these because... They always advertise solving the problems that are considered a beauty standard nowadays, so it's just ridiculous. No dieting or tiresome exercise is necessary, so this also solves an issue of actually putting in work. Simply apply and massage Tiffany Tissue Builder wherever you want to develop more flesh. Results guaranteed or your money promptly refunded if you are not delighted after four weeks use. It always makes me a little skeptical because a lot of these ads promise to refund you if you're not satisfied with the results, but then how would they earn money? We obviously know that there was no such thing as a tissue builder that will round out hollow cheeks. So obviously 90% of the women using the product were probably not satisfied with the, with the results. Next up, there is a photo of a lady that is doing her eyebrows. She's looking very elegant. And then there's a big sign above her that says, what a fool she is to make an eyebrow so important and to neglect her teeth and gums to tolerate pink toothbrush no one would quarrel with this woman for using every beauty art at her command the shape of a fingertip the arch of an eyebrow are all so important to true loveliness but what is gained if dull teeth and tender gums destroy her charm 
So many women are unaware that their teeth need a beauty treatment too. So again, trying to make women paranoid about secretly having bad breath or just looking ugly. So few realize the fact that pink toothbrush means tender gums and tender gums mean dull teeth and clouded unattractive smile. I'd, I'm not sure what they're referring to here as a pink toothbrush. Dental science explains pink toothbrush and how massage and ipana help keep gums firm and teeth bright. Soft foods are mainly responsible for pink toothbrush. Follow dental science. Massage your gums with Ipana every time you brush your teeth. Your teeth are more brilliant when your gums are in good condition and they are safer. There is also a section of the ad that says, professional opinion says, by a well-known authority, modern food is too soft and does not call for a hard effort to chew it. From a widely read textbook, Massage improves the health of the gums by stimulating the blood circulation. It also toughens the gums, making them more resistant to disease. A famous scientist says, mouth hygiene means sound teeth and healthy gums in clean mouths. Okay, so pink toothbrush has got to be some sort of condition. Do they refer to bleeding gums? I'm a little lost here, but either way, how dare she focus on her makeup instead of her gums? Now here's a fragrance ad. Those were a little more sophisticated because like perfume ads nowadays, they're trying to evoke feelings of glamour and elegance. Oh, golden sands. You may meet him tomorrow in a busy crowd, as close as if you walked together on golden sands by an emerald sea. Stir in him the urge to know you, with the daytime fragrance Bouquet Lentherique. Your fragrance among the precious Lentherique perfumes, released in an eau de cologne supremely fine. A double essence. Vivid refreshment after the bath. Delicate spray on your lingerie. Then your scent for the day, light, lingering, exquisite, wherever fine perfumes are sold. The daytime fragrance, quiet, but with a strange persistence. <laughs> it, it's interesting how similar it is to modern fragrance ads, especially the last bit, like having a, a tagline for a perfume, quiet, but with a strange resistance. Bouquet Lentherique. Like, what is this about perfumes that makes us want to hear people saying their names? So this one is like, the fragrance can be your seduction tool. You can stir in him the urge to know you, which is quite interesting, I think. But it's also much less aggressive than the beauty products. So another ad is two elegant ladies having a conversation. I can't dance another step. I'm so uncomfortable. Come to the dressing room a moment. I wanted you to try Wondersoft Kotex because it ends chafing entirely. Later. This Wondersoft Kotex is marvelous, Anne. I never would have believed one could be so active with no discomfort whatsoever. Why endure needless chafing when Wondersoft Kotex prevents it? If only you could join me in reading the many personal letters I receive daily, you would realize how Wondersoft Codex is changing women's lives, says Mary Pauline Callender, author of Marjorie May's 12th birthday and confidant of a million women on their feminine problems. Wondersoft just won't chafe. You see, the sides of this pad are covered with a film of oh-so-soft cotton. Where the sides touch, Wondersoft Codex is soft and dry and stays soft and dry. Yet the top and bottom are left free to take up moisture and no twisting, thank goodness. In case you didn't pick up on it yet, obviously it's, it's the pad, except the early pad which was attached to a belt. And according to this ad, a common problem while wearing those pads was chafing, so the Wonders of Codex was supposed to prevent it. Whether or not it actually did, that we would probably not know unless someone's grandma talked about it. Another dentistry related ad. She always thought dull teeth were natural until she tried a true film removing toothpaste. Film mars the loveliness of teeth. It is the greatest single cause of tooth decay. And if you use ordinary brushing methods, you may not escape this dangerous film, which forms constantly on everyone's teeth. 
There is now one best way to keep your teeth free of film. Laboratory tests and scientific facts indicate that way is Pepsodent, known as the special film removing toothpaste. When Pepsodent is so safe, so certain, how can you afford to entrust the care of your teeth to hit or miss methods or bargain dentifrices? Just try Pepsodent toothpaste once. We believe you will want to use Pepsodent regularly twice a day thereafter, and be sure to see your dentist at least twice a year. This sounds pretty neutral. What I find interesting is how long the ads were at the time, because like who has the time to read about how a toothpaste works? I'm just gonna look at the image, maybe read the top caption and that's it. This is interesting. How blondes hold their sweethearts. Men stay in love with the blonde who makes the most of her hair. She does it with Blondex, the powder shampoo that sets light hair aglow with new lustrous beauty, keeps it golden bright and radiantly gleaming. Let Blondex make your hair unforgettably alluring. Blondex comes in two sizes, the new inexpensive 25 cent package and the economical $1 bottle. Try it today and see the difference at all good drug and department stores. Men stay in love with the blonde who makes the most of her hair is kind of like saying that if your blonde gets dull, your man is gonna dump you. But also the whole ad, like the undertone is go blonde and you will get bitches, basically. Here is a very strange ad which starts like this. Let the man with the withered arm warn you. It's a chewing gum ad, by the way. Chew delicious dentine often. For 10 years, the Indian fakir held his arm motionless, pointing toward Mecca. Now, through the lack of exercise, his arm is withered, useless. The mouth, too, needs exercise, regular vigorous chewing to make it work normally, to help keep the mouth and gums healthy, to keep the teeth clean and sound. Dentine, a special gum with an extra firmness, supplies the vigorous chewing we all need in a pleasant way. Everyone in the family should chew dentine often. It helps improve the mouth structure and strengthens the mouth muscles. Many people chew dentine for mouth health, but even more chew it because of its spicy, delightful flavor. From the very first savory taste, you will rejoice at having found so good a chewing gum. You'll enjoy its satisfying firmness, its smooth texture. Try dentine today and keep on chewing it for health and for pleasure. I don't think I've ever seen a chewing gum ad that was not about whitening or cleaning the teeth, but about keeping your mouth muscles fit. <laughs> Another dental ad. There is an image of a very sad and angry lady that is like crossed out and there is a happy lady next to her. Expected to go through life with tarnished teeth. Imagine her delight when new type dental cream cleans her teeth sparkling white almost overnight. Now, if your smile reveals tarnished teeth that blot out beauty as a dark cloud does the sun, it's nobody's fault but your own, for the way has been found to make teeth white and attractive, even if years of brushing have failed to do so. There is a lot more about the cream. Whitens teeth three shades in three days. That sounds like something a modern ad would say. Only half a minute and the perspiration odor problem is disposed of for the day. There never was a time when women were so unafraid of facts, so direct in dealing with them. Take the unpleasant fact of underarm odor, for instance. They no longer whisper about it. They no longer ignore it. They simply say, of course, we're all in constant danger of perspiration odor. That's the way nature made us. We know the only way to be safe is to use something made specially to neutralize unpleasant odor. And what is this something women use? More than a million smart, busy women use MUM, a snowy, fragrant cream which acts instantly to destroy disagreeable odor and gives all-day protection. What is there about MUM that so appeals to these modern women? Perhaps the thing they appreciate most is that it takes only half a minute to use MUM. A quick fingertip full to each underarm, then onto your dress and on your way. No time wasted for these busy women. And think of this too, you can use mom anytime during the day or evening, even after you're dressed. For mom, it's perfectly harmless to clothing. This is interesting because I was just thinking that because it said that 
you you apply the cream to your armpits and then you you put your dress on and my first thought was all that cream soaking into your the armpits of the dress but apparently it's harmless clothing mom is very soothing to the skin even a sensitive skin you can use it right after shaving Used on the hands, it destroys lingering odors such as onion, fish, and dry cleaner. It doesn't interfere in any way with the natural processes of perspiration. It simply destroys unpleasant odor. Save time, be sure of protection always by using mum regularly every day. There is also a small text at the bottom of the ad that says invaluable in another way too. For that protection which every woman wants to be sure of, use mom on the sanitary napkin. No more nervous self-suspicion when you depend on mom. Its deodorant service here is a great comfort. So it could also be used on the sanitary pads basically to, to block the smell. But also just the way they write about it. We're all in constant danger of perspiration odor. Uh, the only way to be safe. It sounds like your bodily functions were a threat to you in the 30s. And it's crazy. Lovely skin may come almost overnight, thanks to Dr. Edwards. If you want that perfect seashell complexion so irresistibly lovely, you should try Dr. Edwards Olive Tablets. An efficient substitute for calomel, mild in action yet effective, these tablets have quickly and safely helped thousands to banish unsightly blemishes and pimples. The flush of health is restored to cheeks. It's crazy the way they described those products because they make it sound like all you needed was one specific product and it could deal with all your problems, which we know not to be true because if that were true, we would still be using that product nowadays. It's funny how none of these ads mention anything about skin types, complexion types, dryness of the skin, oiliness of the skin, nothing like that. So they just, they want to get all the clients possible. Here is just a, a trivia, sort of, because I think it's really interesting. I think it was, this was a, a 1936 magazine, and there was a tiny ad that says, Witch's Party Book. Nothing like it to cheer up a party. Explains the famous Napoleon's Oraculum, or Book of Fate. Gives the most interesting information for playing cards, dice, dominoes. Tells you in simple language how to know the disposition and temper of your friends and other absorbing subjects impossible to list here. Greatest value for 25 cents in coin or stamps. A real tonic for your relaxation and amusement. A rare Chinese coin is given gratis with every book. There is a cute image of a witch flying on a inverted broomstick because I don't know why she's holding it that way, but nothing like it to cheer up a party. Imagine going to a house party in the 30s. Everyone's dressed in silks, long gowns, cocktails, art deco vibes. And then a the hostess is like, so do you guys do tarot? So we have talked about ads that were referring to gaining flesh or gaining weight, but... Don't be fooled, if you are too plump, that was also not good by the standards of the era. There were, of course, ads that were advertising helping you lose weight. You too can reduce. You too will say good riddance to burdensome flesh. You too will enjoy slender, fashionable lines. This celebrated French treatment is so simple, so delightful. No exhausting exercise, no tiresome dieting, no dangerous drugs. Merely a series of refreshing, fragrant baths. Society leaders have introduced the treatment to America and thousands of women in all walks of life are mighty thankful. So it's a bath that's supposed to make you skinny? That is... That is crazy, actually. <laughs> so again, one of those products that will fix you. The alluring, irresistible charm of woman. Not infrequently, a woman loses charm because her nervous system is run down. Preach, I mean. Strong nerves and good looks go together. The woman who takes the herbal tonic, which Dr. Pierce prescribed for many years when in active practice, namely Dr. Pierce's favorite prescription, retains her clear complexion, bright eyes, vivacity, and youthful appearance. Women should take this tonic in maidenhood, womanhood, or motherhood. Druggists have it in fluid and tablets. So again, it doesn't really say what it does. It does everything. It's just gonna make you look better, it's just gonna make you feel better, and it's, it's just some herbs. This is a heavy one. There is a lady that is looking very concerned, and then the ad says, humiliation 
Stubborn skin blemishes, wash them away. What a humiliating affliction, these stubborn pimples, rashes and skin blemishes. This is guilt tripping at, at its finest. Like I can imagine if you even felt good about yourself at the era and then you read ads like this, you were like something's wrong with me and I'm a disgusting piece of why don't you try DDD, the cooling healing liquid which has freed so many after all else failed. A touch and all itching is gone, then the healing begins. And soon a clear smooth skin. Just try a 35 cents bottle. Your druggist will refund your money if it fails to help you. How did the returns work? I'm really curious about this because I do not believe that if it was actually a working system, people would not start abusing it and then try to return the medicine as soon as you're almost finished. But also just the way this ad is written is so brutal and so rude that I'm really grateful that we don't have to read ads like this nowadays. There is a photo of a lady being um, hugged by a man and the ad says she knows the secret of breath control. It's the Pepsodent antiseptic by the way. Keeps breath pure and sweet one to two hours longer. This one is a little brutal. There is a lady putting sugar in her tea. She looks very sweet. She's smiling and then the ad says wife, mother, hostess, but not a businesswoman. <laughs> Whatever may happen, she will be able to carry on in her natural role of wife, mother, hostess. Her husband has made it certain with life insurance. You can promise your wife the same security. Let us show you how. So again, a very traditional view of all that uh, the woman is good for is just being a wife, mother and maybe hostess. This is a really funny one. A photo of a couple where the lady is holding pliers next to the husband's teeth. And the guy's like, hey, cut it out. What you doing with those pliers? And the lady says, I've got to extract a dollar from you for stockings. <laughs> and then the ad says, it was like pulling teeth to get money from her husband until she proved to him how she could help. What did my husband know about the price of potatoes and pot roast and cold cream? The only way for us to get ahead was for me to be the treasurer. Well, after I showed him the better buymanship bulletins and the money management book I had sent for, there wasn't much argument. Now that I'm handling the money, I save as much as 20% on many things I buy. And I really am getting ahead by following the household budget plan. The doctor of family finances gets lots of letters like this. Why don't you write in too? Tell him all about your money troubles. There is a solution waiting for you and this coupon will bring it. So the couple has now reconciled and he says, all right, you handle the money. And she says, okay, honey, now we'll get somewhere. It's, it's funny and it's sad. It's sad, obviously, because the default way to do things was the husband controlling all of the finances and, you know, she couldn't even get a dollar for stockings. But then the positive thing is that it was actually the case in, in a lot of households that, yes, the wife was controlling the finances because she was the one that was doing all the buying and all the spending. So it just made more sense. Now, this one's awful because it's a really sad drawing of a really sad dog and it says, nobody loves me. And then it goes on to say, your dog will never feel this way if you give him an occasional treatment of surgeon condition pills. Give them for a week. They keep dogs healthy, alert, full of pep. Strengthen the constitution. Make dogs better able to resist disease. <laughs> This is awful. He looks so sad. He's so sad. Another ad for Blondex. Blondex was trying really hard to get women to dye their hair blonde. Blonde marries millionaire. A real love match. He couldn't help falling in love with her. Such thrilling golden hair would captivate any man. Her secret? Blondex, the powdery shampoo for blondes only. For blonde hair beauty men can't resist, start using Blondex today. Now, this is actually a positive example of how women were maybe not always portrayed as housewives, as ugly, as smelly and disgusting. This is an ad for the new General Dual 10 tires, like car tires. There is a, a picture of two very elegantly dressed ladies next to a beautiful Art Deco car. And, and then one of them is saying, with these tires, I never have that helpless, hopeless feeling. 
New flexible tread tire stops straight in its tracks, completely eliminates the dangerous skid swerve. Every motorist has experienced a few of those moments of utter helplessness that go with skidding. Now you can drive with the definite assurance of greater safety. The new General Dual 10 eliminates the dangerous skid swerve and tail spin. You can stop your car quicker and always straighten its tracks on any road, wet or dry. Slay, they look so good by the way, the ladies. On this positive note, we are ending this uh, episode. It, it probably was a little depressing just thinking what the woman at the time had to go through because we still remember the aftermath of the 2000s body shaming. I still remember that and it wasn't even that much about marketing at the time. It was mostly in like pop culture media, but... I can imagine the the damage that ads like this did to women that were already under immense pressure from the society to look their best and to woo a husband and to keep the husband. And my only hope is that similarly to the ads we see nowadays, we sort of distance ourselves from them. 90% of the ads that I have seen for modern day drugs, like medicine, I'm just like, okay, sure, yeah, it's gonna heal me in a day, sure. You're just very skeptical about ads nowadays. I'm worried that at the time, maybe people were a little more gullible, but also it's not like ads just suddenly appeared in the 30s. They were already a thing long before, so... Obviously, there were probably some people that were very desperate and that were living in constant fear of not being enough and not looking good enough. And those ads were probably directed to those people. But overall, I'm hoping that an average reader of one of those magazines was just not bothered that much because they just probably laughed at them. I mean, I'm always assuming that people have not changed. So I'm pretty sure they were like, look at this ad. What is this? Like, what do you mean I stink? <laughs> Keeping that in mind, thank you for listening and I'll, I'll see you, hear you in another episode. Bye!